Good morning, VJM family. It's your boy Boomin coming at you with yet another video. Go ahead and do all the things that the algorithm likes for me. I got my hot tea and honey lots of loaded ready to go. Let's get this show started. Thank you to our wonderful Patreon subscribers, Catherine B, Offla LLC, Craig and Farouz, Dan Maryland for Crypto, VET Docky. Join the Patreon army down below, guys, as we get ready to transition into the next bull run. I'm excited for it. We're all excited for it. Let's get this show started. All right, guys, we were talking about VeChain today. So we got VeChain here posting how Web3 technology is going to impact business in the coming years. Take it from VeChain Chief Business Development Officer. The digital revolution is just at the beginning. It will take off with physical interfaces like the sensors and IoT devices create a new hybrid, intelligent, and hyper-connected reality, allowing real-time data monitoring, computation, and prediction. Connectivity, AI, and blockchain will enable this revolution, bringing personalized experiences, new opportunities for people and enterprises, and innovative solutions to sustainability challenges. Let's go ahead and take a look at the digital technology at work here. Let's see. This is on LinkedIn here. Let's take a look at this video. Nice video, nice little hype video, pretty awesome. And this talking about the ATP finals here, uh, embedded with NFC chip powered by VeChain. Thor champions this year receive a special NFT created by VeChain with the X Plus and World of V, a digital collectible that adds a layer of authenticity and exclusivity to a prize like never before. VeChain is using Fidgetals to bridge a gap between two formerly distant worlds, unlocking new value and a one-of-a-kind experience. All right, guys, let's go ahead and move on. Got another video here. Shout out to JPVET. Success is not something we can own. It's something we weren't. We must pay the rent every day, and we do so through small choices we make every day. That is true. Success is a result of these small choices compounded over time. I'm a proud V-Chain warrior. Let's take a look at this video. Traditional business models face a challenge to be reshaped from linear to circular models. VeChain ecosystems enable everyone to unite towards the sustainability mission. We're here in Dublin with key VeChain builders in order to present the white paper and see if there are any opportunities to collaborate together in order to scale sustainability solutions. The main role of a CTO in a Web3 company is to build tools technology. What we want to achieve in the end, uh, increase the number of developers on VeChain, the builder community. I call it builders now because it's either devs or non devs. Anyone should be able to build them. And we are very open to work on that, to see how we can engage more developers, more builders to design and to deliver sustainability applications on the VeChain Tor blockchain. Awesome. Uh, that was a great video there. All right, guys, uh, we got one more video for you. <laughs> Not too much news in the VeChain ecosystem today, but we got a new Man Viking Games update. I think you guys will be interested in it. This is game mechanics development here. It's only six minutes. The last Man Viking Games update was like 16. <laughs> so this is a little bit more bite size. So all the Man Viking Games uh, fans out there um, are going to be excited to, to hear this. So let's take a look. Then we'll wrap things up, guys. Hey! 
Hey everyone, welcome to another video. Today, we have some exciting things for you. So, let's get into it. Okay, so our first guest for today is Brock. Say hi to the camera. Hello guys, long time to see you. Brock here, I'm with Rafa, and start the show. So Brock, I heard you guys meet something for the community, right? Can you tell us a little bit about that? First of all, the, some members of the community of Madbike, they tabled an, an axe from a blacksmith, and they asked me if I could model the axe in 3D uh, for create a NFT. So I say I need the pictures, the permission of the blacksmith, and the green light of the, of the boss. And all said, okay. So we have now a NFT made of a real axe. That's pretty cool. So the community basically just made a new NFT thanks to you. Yes, they make me lost the decisions of my own design, but it's cool. The axe is really, really detailed, really nice. So, I'm gonna see it. That's pretty cool. And I guess uh, since you had the pictures beforehand, you didn't have to look for reference like the last time you showed us your 3D process, right? Uh, yeah, for make the, the axe, uh, I need a lot of uh, reference. So, uh, a member of the MBG community. Uh, they sent me uh, some pictures from front side, uh, upside, downside, and I got all the pictures in order to make like a 3D model or a copy, but copy is not a good word, so it's a reference. That's better. And I guess after you made the model, uh, you had to texture, texturize it as well, right? Yeah. In this case, I take the same pictures and I try to emulate the same texture of the wood, the leather, the metal, and the, like the most difficult part of this, um, the handle of the axe got a leather braided like a like a net. Yeah. So that is the most difficult part because I need to learn uh, new model techniques. So I'm really grateful for the community because I learn a lot and work with them. That's so cool. That's so cool. So this axe, why did we want to make it? Like, why did you specifically wanted to make that that axe? Uh, well. First, uh, we made it because the community asked for it, but the axe is not only an NFT, it's going to be a playable asset in the game. That is so cool. And who's going to do that? Like the process from taking your axe and putting it into the game? Well, for answer to that, we need to talk with Roberto. Go, Roberto. Hey, everyone. We're here with our second guest. Can you introduce yourself, please? Well, hi, I'm Roberto. I'm the game programmer and uh... Well, so uh, we were just here with Brock and he told us a little bit about the axe that he was modeling and he told us that he passed it on to you to get it into a little game, right? Yeah, and then uh, it is relatively easy because we have made a system for different weapons and, well, different animations for all of them as well and places for them to be in the character as well. So we just had to grab the axe that Brock made we have to just make a couple slots and a couple, you could say, triggers in the weapon. Then we just have to create a new item. Then add it and the animations list of that item to the huge list of uh, combat data that we have. And then, voila, we just can just place uh, the new item on the, on the map or on the character. And we, well, the character will be ready to use it with all the specifics that it, the axe has. Well, for example, the axe will be different than the sword in both range, but it will just work because with the slots and the triggers, it will just detect what the actual range of the axe is. There might have to be some adjustments here and there, but uh, for the most part, it is pretty straightforward. Yeah, that's cool. And I think that, I guess this is easy, as you say it now, that after you made a full system, right? So uh, in, thanks to our new system that you guys made, we can just put any weapon now and it's going to work basically pretty easily, right? Pretty easily or even even replace any weapon for whatever we want. And even if we have to create something completely new, we have a system that we can just set new things as, as we wish. For example, all we really need for something more intricate perhaps is for us to have a list of animations and lists of, of attacks that we want and from then on we just we just add what we want in what specifics we can what attacks how many attacks the speed of those attacks and from then on 
we can even set if it is related to if the character has a weapon or not. It could be character based even. So two characters can have different animations and different attacks and different equipment like this axe and they can do different things. Two characters could have the same axe, but in them, it could do something completely different too. That's amazing, because like in the future, in our game, the idea is to have a customizable character, right? So anyone could make like their own character and have their own movesets, their own weapons and all of that. So that should not be a problem. That's amazing. So thank you for joining us. And uh, no problem. Happy to be here. Great. And so I guess I'll see you guys on the next update. Hope you guys enjoyed our little chat with Brock and our friend here, Roberto. And I'll be seeing you very soon. All right. That was the MVG update, guys. Thank you for hanging out and listening to that. Let's go to wrap things up. Like I said, not too much stuff going. Whoa, this is wrong. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, man. This is so wrong. The uh, Bitcoin having countdown. I need to find a new site because uh, the other site, it. I think it got taken down or something. I don't. I really don't know, but uh, we're gonna be working on that. Um, that sucks. Anyway, uh, let's take a look at the markets here, guys. Nothing really to shake a stick at, so we're not gonna spend too much time on it here. Yeah, kind of a boring day in crypto, like all bear markets. So I love y'all. Let's keep chopping wood. Chain link. I done told y'all to buy chain like when it was at five dollars, but hey, y'all don't want to listen to me, so it is what it is. I'll talk to you guys later. Love y'all. Bye.